He also had blonde hair, blue eyes, really nice even white teeth, and a square jaw. Now he expressed his masculinity through the repair and riding of motorcycles. He was boating and fishing, drinking, smoking pot and cigarettes. He spent his nights in bars playing pool. And now most of his friends at that time were a lot like him. So the day of the party, my parents, who are about 15 years older than the uncle, go for a walk. So they disappear. Now the rest of my aunts and uncles and cousins sort of hang around the periphery. My younger brother Dagan and I know that there's going to be times when this keg is not supervised. So we're watching it like a hawk, and we're also waiting for people to sort of carelessly leave cups on the porch or the stoop. And in this way, we spend the afternoon drinking. But we don't get fucked up because we don't want to get in trouble. We just want to get high and feel good. Now, one of my brain children at this time was that I wanted to jump off a train bridge a few beaches over. Now, that afternoon, I convinced my brother and the kids across the way, Russ, his younger brother, Tuna Fish, and their cousin, Shayla, to join me on this adventure. It's about a 20-minute walk to the beaches and another five minutes to the jumping off point. So we're standing there, and it's low tide, and we can see these large rocks covered in slime and barnacles, and it's pretty much a no-go. So defeated, we turn and head back. And as we're walking, tuna fish jokes that the 420 should be arriving at any time. And we all laugh. <laughs> and then we hear, woo, and the train is coming around the corner. So we turn and we catch the sun glinting off the silver nose of the engine, and in that instant, all five of us become gifted athletes, <laughs> and we sprint, and no one slips, no one trips, and no one falls between the railroad ties. And when we get to the shore, Russ grabs Shayla and jumps to the side, Dagan, Tuna Fish, and I dive to the ground. And a couple seconds later, I'm looking up, and I watch as the train wheels go like inches from my face. So the train passes, and aside from all of us having pretty much shattered nerves, we're fine. So we get up, and wordlessly we all go to our respective cottages, and we're sort of processing this event in our own ways. Now in the years that continued, or sorry, in the years that followed, I continued drinking and smoking, but train tracks, I have not gone near any of them since. <laughs>